Every day, more than 1.5 million vehicles pass through a single narrow passage beneath the towering Alps, connecting France and Italy. This tunnel, known as the Mont Blanc Tunnel, is no ordinary road. Stretching 11.6 kilometers under Europe's tallest mountain and sitting 2,480 meters beneath the surface, it's the second deepest operational road tunnel in the world. But after more than 60 years of non-stop use and the deadly 1999 fire that claimed 39 lives, the tunnel is now being rebuilt from the inside out. Not all at once, not in one year, but over 18 years, all while keeping traffic flowing. Massive vault reconstructions, high-tech smoke clearing fans, nighttime road deck replacements, all deep underground. It's one of Europe's most ambitious infrastructure upgrades ever attempted under active use. But what does it take to renovate a tunnel nearly 2.5 kilometers below solid rock? A tunnel that can't be shut down for long, yet needs a full structural makeover. The Mont Blanc Tunnel isn't just a tunnel through a mountain. It's a lifeline. Stretching 11.6 kilometers beneath the Alps, it connects Chamonix in France to Courmayeur in Italy. Every year it carries over 1.5 million vehicles, two-thirds cars, one-third trucks. That makes it one of the busiest freight routes between northern and southern Europe. For Italy, this tunnel is especially important. It handles a third of its goods to the north. So, how did this engineering wonder come to life? Opened on July 19, 1965, the Mont Blanc Tunnel was a groundbreaking project for its time. It was the longest highway tunnel in the world and the first large rock tunnel to be drilled full face. This means the entire width was excavated at once, a true feat of engineering. To build it, over 4.6 million man-hours were spent, 711 tons of explosives were used, and nearly 60,000 tons of cement went into blasting through 555,000 cubic meters of solid alpine rock. The tunnel is 8.6 meters wide and 4.35 meters tall, with a subtle V-shape to help with ventilation. But even with its impressive design, the tunnel has faced some terrifying moments. On March 24, 1999, disaster struck. A fire broke out inside a truck carrying margarine and flour. The flames spread quickly and smoke filled the air. Tragically, 39 people lost their lives. The entire tunnel was closed for three years. When it finally reopened in 2002, it was completely rebuilt. Emergency shelters, high-tech surveillance and new safety protocols turned it into one of the safest tunnels in the world. However, after 60 years of heavy use and pressure from the Alps, the tunnel started to show signs of wear. Parts of the structure had aged and water had started to seep in. It was clear that the tunnel needed more than just maintenance, it needed a complete overhaul. So, in 2024, the Mont Blanc Tunnel began a massive renovation project that would take several years to complete. But how do you upgrade one of Europe's deepest, busiest and most important tunnels without shutting it down completely? In September 2024, a bold and delicate mission began. The first phase of deep renovation inside the Mont Blanc Tunnel. So why was this such a big deal? The goal was to rebuild two 300-meter sections of the tunnel's vault. But this wasn't as simple as replacing a few ceiling tiles. It was a complex, high-stakes engineering job under extreme conditions. No vehicles could pass through, and every minute counted. For 15 straight weeks, from early September to mid-December, the tunnel was completely shut down. More than 150 skilled workers worked around the clock. In total, they put in more than 150,000 hours. Now, you might be wondering, why close the tunnel completely? The answer lies in the danger. The work was too risky to allow even temporary traffic. Engineers had to remove all tunnel equipment, cameras, fans, emergency signs, before they could start working. Then they had to plane the concrete vault, inject mortar, waterproof the tunnel, and reinstall everything. These two 300-meter sections weren't chosen randomly. One is nearly two kilometers from the French entrance, and the other is eight kilometers in. 
These areas had been affected by water infiltration and needed special attention with experimental rebuilding techniques. This wasn't just a one-time fix, it was a test. A test to figure out how to approach the complete renovation of the entire 11.6 km tunnel in the coming years. And that's where it gets even more impressive. Instead of shutting the tunnel down for four years straight, the companies in charge, ATMB on the French side and SITMB on the Italian side, decided to go with a long-term plan. The tunnel will be closed for just three to four months each year, for the next 18 years. Every year, a new section of the tunnel will be worked on, using what they learned from the 2024 pilot phase. Between 2018 and 2024, the middle 1,700 metres of the road deck were completely replaced at night, so the tunnel stayed open during the day. That alone cost 60 million euro. Engineers had to work with extreme precision, removing worn-out sections, replacing the supports beneath the roadway and reinforcing the ventilation channels that run underneath. This method had first been tested in 2018, and thanks to the experience gained, it became the standard for the multi-year project. The final stage of this road deck overhaul wrapped up in June 2024, covering a central 240-metre stretch. The 2024 Volt Works added another 24 million euro to the bill, split between France and Italy. Engineers worked 24 hours a day to reconstruct two 300-metre sections of the ceiling, using new techniques to strengthen and waterproof the tunnel vault. And the next phase? They're planning to rebuild another 600-metre vault section in 2025, using everything they learned during this first pilot. This goes beyond civil engineering. It's like performing surgery on a tunnel, quietly, deep inside the Alps. To make these works possible, new ventilation systems were installed. Effiage Energy Systems led a team from both France and Italy to replace old fans with 76 powerful smoke-clearing gas pedals. These aren't the kind of fans that spin constantly. They're designed to activate only when needed, pulling smoke upward through special hatches in the ceiling and funneling it into ducts below the road. From there, the smoke is expelled outside the tunnel. This setup makes emergency evacuations faster and safer. And it's working. The new fans are now performing 30% better than before. Meanwhile, the road surface itself has also seen upgrades. Engineers implemented a smart thermoregulation system that uses the natural runoff water from the mountain. This water, always around 9 degrees Celsius, now cools the asphalt during summer and helps melt snow in winter, cutting back on salt use and extending the road's lifespan. Back in 2012, this concept was first applied to air conditioners inside the tunnel. The old gas-powered cooling units were swapped out for water-cooled systems. These now regulate temperatures in technical areas packed with computer servers and electronics, improving energy efficiency. In fact, everything inside the tunnel is carefully monitored. Sensors track air quality every meter. High-tech surveillance systems can instantly spot speeding or stalled vehicles. Emergency shelters are spaced out every 300 meters and electronic signs light up automatically if drivers go over the 50 km per hour speed limit. So, what's next? In addition to these structural upgrades, the tunnel is being considered for even more innovations. There are talks about testing platooning, a system where trucks are digitally linked together and drive in a group led by one driver. This could help reduce traffic risks, save fuel and lower emissions. The Mont Blanc tunnel might even become the first place in Europe to try it out. But with all this construction, closures are unavoidable. In September, full closures, like the one in 2024, will happen every year. All of this is happening to preserve an aging yet essential piece of infrastructure and turn it into a tunnel that's ready for the future. So what happens when it's closed? When the Mont Blanc tunnel closes, things get chaotic. In September 2024, traffic jams stretched for hours. 
trucks had to find new routes. Tourists scrambled to figure out where to go. With more than 1.5 million vehicles passing through the tunnel each year, the impact was huge. So what are the options when the tunnel shuts down? One of the main alternatives is the Frasius Tunnel, located about 160 kilometers south. This tunnel connects Modane in France to Baroneccia in Italy and is open to both light vehicles and trucks. In August 2024, a heavy storm caused a rock slide near the Frasius Tunnel. Massive rocks tumbled onto the road and damaged the nearby railway tracks. The area had to be sealed off until the mountainside was stabilized. Rail traffic between saint jean de maurienne and Modane was suspended indefinitely. As a result, freight trucks were rerouted back through the Mont Blanc tunnel, just as it was shutting down for its 15-week renovation. This disruption caused long delays and traffic jams with wait times at Mont Blanc stretching over two hours. The incident exposed how vulnerable these critical alpine crossings are to extreme weather and geological hazards. There are other routes too. The Grand St. Bernard Tunnel is further east and there are mountain passes like Petit St. Bernard, Mont Cenis and Mont Genève. But these routes have their own challenges. They are only open for part of the year. Snow usually forces them to close by late October. Some roads are narrow and winding and others face sudden closures due to weather, making them unreliable for heavy vehicles or long haul transport. And then there's the cost. The Mont Blanc tunnel toll is expensive, over 51 euro one way for a car. The Fraser's tunnel toll is even higher. And when the Mont Blanc tunnel is closed, drivers don't have much choice but to pay these fees. For heavy trucks, the problems are even worse. Every delay means more lost time and money. For businesses in Italy and France, the Mont Blanc tunnel isn't merely a convenience, it's essential. Without it, their whole supply chain could be at risk. That's why a full four-year closure was rejected. It would have saved time on the works, but crippled cross-border trade. Instead, they chose an 18-year phased plan. This allows repairs to happen while keeping things running. It's tough, yes, but it's something people can handle. Even the subscriptions are adjusted. Multi-trip toll passes are automatically extended when closures happen. It's a small thing, but it really helps the daily commuters. Still, the frustration is real. Every year there are more closures, more detours, and more costs. But here's the thing. Each section that gets sealed brings the tunnel one step closer to being safer, smarter, and more sustainable. So while engineers keep drilling, sealing, and rebuilding, travelers wait for a smoother, safer ride under the Alps. What are your thoughts on the Mont Blanc tunnel renovations and their impact? Do you think the closures are worth it? Drop your opinion below, like and subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds and turn on notifications. See you in the next video.